Hello and welcome at the GCP channel. Today we have an English video because we have a foreign guest with us. It's Dr. Jiri Paseka from Czech Republic. And Jiri is an expert in clinical studies in Central Europe. Hello, Andreas. Jiri, thank you for being here and thank you for following our invitation. You are an expert in clinical studies in Central Europe, so uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit how to conduct clinical studies in Central Europe in, in certain countries. And But let's start first with you and uh, about Central Europe itself. Okay, thank you Andreas, thank you for inviting me. Uh, it's my great pleasure to be here and to speak about clinical trials in the Central Europe. Uh, concerning me, I'm a physician by my training and I joined pharmaceutical industry in 1999. During the next seven years, I took uh, several positions uh, within Janssen Silak, a pharmaceutical division of Johnson & Johnson company. I started as uh, CRA, then uh, became a medical affairs manager and spent also a couple of interesting years as a marketing and uh, sales manager. Uh, then I uh, served as a head of clinical operation back in clinical research in the biggest Czech CRO in those days. And I started my own company in 2009. It covered with clinical research services uh, the Czech Republic, Hungary and Slovakia. Uh, recently we merged with bigger uh, European CRO in order to make a strong European player in this field. Actually, from my point of view, my bio is not so important. Uh, I find important what I feel that makes a success of clinical research. It's a wise and strong uh, project management. It's uh, people involved, both investigators and CRO staff. It's definitely uh, properly used technologies and also the excellent selection of uh, clinical sites. Yuri, your experience is for sure very impressive. But let's talk a little bit more about the countries where you have done studies already. So Czech Republic, Slovakia and Hungary. Can you tell me a little bit more about these countries? Definitely, I can. Uh, I suggest to add also Poland, then we can speak about Central Europe, Europe on the whole. Uh, actually, uh, all these countries, Poland, the Czech Republic, Slovakia and Hungary, are the members of European Union and together forms the Visegrad group, which is a cultural and political alliance of these Central European countries. Uh, it's interesting that history repeats because the name Visegrad was derived from the meeting of Bohemian, Polish and Hungarian kings already in 1335 when they uh, discussed how to get to the European market more easily. But back to these days, uh, those countries together pose a population of more than uh, 64 million uh, people. Uh, their GDP per capita is uh, among the highest in the former communist countries and uh, varies from $29.5,000 for Hungary to $35.5,000 for the Czech Republic. Uh, but to be more illustrative, uh, for example, the Czech uh, GDP is only by 6% lower than in Italy, and it's like 4.5% higher than in uh, Portugal. Healthcare systems in these countries are generally publicly founded, offering a wide range of healthcare to all citizens. However, the private healthcare is also available in all these countries. Okay, Thierry. You spoke already about the facilities, but what kind of investigators do you involve in clinical studies? More the GPs or more the investigators working at the hospitals? Actually, nowadays, uh, all of them. Uh, 15 years ago, we involved mainly the big hospitals, uh, but uh, since that time, the quality of clinical trials executed, for example, by GPs improved uh, dramatically. Uh, there is also a very nice pool of uh, private uh, outpatient uh, clinics well equipped for clinical trials. And last but not least, uh, we have to say that uh, there is also many international as well as uh, local SMOs uh, in all these countries. And how much experience do the investigators have? 
Um, are they GCP trained? Do you have legal requirements like we in Germany for um, continuously GCP trainings for all investigators plus refresher courses on a regular basis? Actually, there is no country specific uh, requirement for uh, the education of investigators. Uh, however, we know that uh, both ICA GCP and European directives require investigators to be fully trained in GCP. And from uh, regulatory inspections in our region, uh, we found out that uh, there is a, a general requirement to have a GCP uh, training before starting uh, any clinical trial and then a refresher every second year. Okay, and what's about the language? Nowadays, I would say 99.9% .9 of all clinical studies are done in English. Do you have any language problems in these countries? Actually, not anymore. Uh, maybe we faced some 20 years ago, uh, but nowadays all investigators can speak uh, fluently in English and not only investigators, but also study nurses and clinical trial uh, coordinators. Uh, should we uh, make an example from the Czech Republic? So we have like 800 uh, fully trained sites uh, all over the Czech Republic where you can find uh, excellent staff all fluent in English. Okay, and what's about the medical indications? So, I mean, what kind of indications can be found best in Central Europe for clinical studies? And let's be honest, uh, I mean, most CROs always promise that in their countries you can find all patients and then the recruitment is worse than expected and the frustration level increase and the conflict increase between sponsor and CROs. I think that doesn't need to be the case. Uh, so what kind of patients can we find in Central Europe? The answer can differ a little bit for each of the countries, but uh, generally we can say that in Central Europe you should not look anymore for the conditions that are connected to uh, less developed or worse healthcare systems, like is the lately diagnosed or badly treated diabetes or poorly controlled uh, hypertension. Uh, generally, we can say that the distribution of trials is very similar to Western Europe, with the highest number in uh, oncology, cardiology, rheumatology or neurology. And uh, prevention of conflicts between the CRO and the sponsor is, from my point of view, the same worldwide. Uh, it's a highly professional and uh, very detailed feasibility that should show us a real potential of, of any country or of any site. Yuri, I completely agree and I think that's a general problem. Sponsors have planned to find 10 or in Wolf 10 sites and then they make a feasibility at 11 or 12 sites instead of making a feasibility at 15 or 20 sites in several countries to involve then the best 10 sites which really provide the patients they need. Exactly. Okay, let's talk about the regulatory background in Central Europe. What kind of ethics committees do you have in these countries and what kind of competent authorities are responsible for approving studies in Czech Republic, Slovakia, Poland and Hungary? This is an easy question. Uh, in all Central European countries, the legislation concerning clinical trials is fully harmonized with the European Union, follow valid directives and prepare for the entering into the application of the clinical trial regulation. Uh, there is a one regulatory authority in each of these countries and from our experiences we can say that uh, the deadlines are always met by both uh, Czech and Hungarian authority while you can face some delays or slight delays in Poland or and less in Slovakia. Uh, the system of ethics committee differs in these countries but generally follows also the European legislation, meets the deadlines and uh, work quite professionally. So officially in all countries in Europe it's more or less the same but I've once read a publication about the mean approval process which says that we need 90 days, which is 30 days longer than um, it should be according to the EU directive. That's also the reason why we are getting now a new EU regulations to speed up the whole process. 
But the funny thing is, according to my experience, it's not the approval process by the competent authorities or ethics committees. It's also mainly caused by the negotiation process um, of the contract between sponsor and clinical study sites. So do we have any chance in Central Europe to speed up the process of contract negotiation? Andreas, you rotate easy and difficult questions. Uh, concerning the contract negotiations, uh, we have to differentiate between uh, private, mostly outpatient sites, uh, where the process lasts a couple of weeks, and the big hospitals. Uh, in the second ones, the negotiations could last up to two months, exceptionally even longer. Uh, we fight with it uh, by knowing the individual hospital administration's requirements and by advising sponsors about it. From the sponsor's perspective, to be fast in negotiations means at the same time to be somehow flexible. Because in the big hospitals, there are some parts of contracts that are hardly negotiable. Jerry, you mentioned already inspections when we talked about GCP experience of your investigators. Um, let's talk about inspections in general. In Germany, for example, we have a federal system and each state is responsible for their own inspections in the state and therefore we have some very active states and some are quite inactive. And then we have the Central Computer Authority, the VIPA, which is responsible for inspections only triggered by the EMA. How is it in your countries? Uh, you don't, I think you don't have a federal system. Who's responsible then? Actually, as you mentioned, uh, our countries are not the federal ones, so we have only one regulatory authority per country, which is responsible also for inspections. Concerning the inspection frequency, I can share with you data from the Czech Republic, where is a difference between the inspection frequency of medical device trials, uh, where almost all trials or a substantial part of the trials is inspected, and the medicinal products. Uh, in the second one, uh, I can share with you the data from two years ago uh, when there were 16 regulatory inspections, national ones, and the State Institute for Drug Control, which is the Czech regulatory authority, took part in one EMA and one MHRA inspection. Okay, 16 inspections, but by uh, within how many studies? Ah, actually, I forgot to mention. In 2016, there were more than 1,000 clinical trials running in the Czech Republic. Okay, 1,000 clinical studies. Well, it's very impressive. You mentioned already medical device studies, which are also run in Czech Republic. And as we know, also the medical device regulation will change the whole medical device world very soon. So we need more clinical data, which means we need to run more clinical studies. Is Czech Republic a good place for medical device manufacturers to run studies? Actually, yes, it is. Uh, as you know, for medical device trials, there is no such demand for very, very big international trials involving sites on almost all continents, like in the case of drugs. For medical device manufacturers, uh, they can collect very high quality data in a couple of sites in one or two of our countries, which is at the end of the day very, very cost effective. Uh, we've started with uh, medical device trials even before the new MDR was published. And nowadays I can say that our activities are equally distributed between the clinical trials of uh, medicinal products and of medical devices. And I'm proud to say that for medical devices, we passed uh, many regulatory inspections on these trials without any finding. Very interesting. But besides collecting data to get a CE mark for the medical devices, uh, the MDR also requires from manufacturers to monitor the whole life cycle of the medical devices better, which means that we need to run more post-market studies with the CE mark medical devices. How is that regulated in Central Europe to run a post-market medical device study? Basically, for post-market studies with CE marked medical devices, you need only ethical committee approval in our countries. And I fully agree with you that the requirements for life cycle management of medical devices will increase a lot under the new MDR. And the manufacturers 
will definitely need a help with it, uh, not only with the preparation and execution of clinical investigations, but also with the preparation of clinical evaluations fully compliant with the new MDR. Jiri, thank you very much so far. Let's come to the final question. What would you advise sponsors who want to run clinical studies in Central Europe? So what do they need to consider? What can they expect when they want to run studies in your region? Okay, let's start with what they should not expect. As I already mentioned, there are no more diagnoses typical for less developed healthcare systems. And they also should not expect extremely low costs for clinical research services. The Central Europe nowadays show a very nice recruitment rates together with the high quality data, not for the cheapest price, but for one of the best cost benefit ratios worldwide. And what are the benefits? The main ones are the high density of uh, very professional sites, well equipped and with fully trained staff and uh, predictable and transparent regulatory environment. These benefits together with the reasonable costs makes the Central Europe very attractive place for execution of clinical trials, especially for small to mid-sized manufacturers of both medical devices and pharmaceuticals. Thank you very much, Jiri. It was extremely interesting. Thank you, Andreas. It was a great opportunity to be here and to speak to you about this interesting topic. I also hope that you like the video, that you keep watching our videos and please subscribe our GCP Mindset channel. Bye-bye and bye. take care.